fast-moving world. All around us, the most extraordinary processes. With access to some of the most fascinating factories, I take you behind the scenes to reveal their production secrets. From craft workshops to international industries. Join me, Francesca Chiorando, as we explore the world's ultimate processes. Today, it's all about boats. I'm out on the water finding out exactly how they're made. From handcrafted cruisers to these state-of-the-art super yachts using cutting-edge technology and with looks to kill. How much would we be looking at for one of these? 20 million euros. I'll take one. Come on. <laughs> We follow the construction from beginning to end. Making them demands experience and a mastery of some amazing processes, including the use of carbon fibre to make the sails. It was a very innovative project, the first boat in the world with a carbon fibre mask, carbon fibre hull. From the painstaking skills needed to mould a hull, right through to the final launch. And what better place to begin this journey than the south of France? Here, on the French Riviera, supermodel yachts jostle for attention. But there's one that stands out above the rest, and that's the Wally. It stands out because Wally has an impressive track record and has been building boats for the last 22 years. Demanding clients want the very best in design. If you have a, the good idea from the beginning, the process can be very fast. If you don't, the process can be very long. Today, on Ultimate Processes, we're going to find out how Wally's super luxury boats are made and how they handle. What really sets these super sleek yachts apart is how they look. I've always believed that the owners want more than the comfort, more than the uh, performance. They want their boat to be the most beautiful of the harbor or the most beautiful of the bay. This is really what the owners, the passionate owners, love on their boats. Each boat we have to, to design and to build um, very much influenced by my taste, by my ideas. I, I always try to, to pass to, to our clients um, what I would like to do for myself. I like to design and to build something better, not just something different, uh, which I think is essential. We know a Wally yacht is expensive. If you were to ring to find out the price, you might be in for a shock. If we have a client, you ask for the price, we say, listen, if you ask for the price, probably you cannot afford it. So don't ask for the price. OK, so I'll let you into a secret. Wally yachts can cost anything between 8 to over 50 million euros. The sky really is the limit. They're expensive because they are packed with the latest design and technology. The high performance sails can be raised just by the push of a button, and the motor yachts can reach speeds of over 100 kilometers an hour. To show me how they're operated, Luca gives me a guided tour. Let's imagine you are the captain or the owner of the boat. Mm -hmm. So you're here, you're steering the boat and you have the control of the engine here and the bow thruster. And everything's controlled here. electronically. There's no, you don't do anything by hand on this boat. Uh, no, it, it will be dangerous to you because you have uh, such a high load on, on the sheets that you, 
it's better not to touch the sheets under the load. You can sail your boat alone. Uh, one person? One person. I mean, you need, let's say, other two persons to, um, uh, to hoist the sails. Mm -hmm. But once the sails are up you can control. at 55 meters, then you can control. You can not only steer, but you can, as I said, uh, trimming the sails. You can tack, you can jive. Mm -hmm. So literally, at the end, you control by a push button the whole boat. Everything. Everything, everything, the engines, the sails, the systems, it's every, everything push button. So by having everything controlled like this, can you have less crew than you would normally have on a boat of this size? Absolutely, absolutely, because you can sail a 40 meters yacht like this one with a crew of two, maximum three people. So even though so much is controlled electronically, you're almost having a better sailing experience because there's less people here with you. Uh, let's say that when you have to sail a boat of this size, you need to have a big experience. <laughs> uh, but the difference is that you can sail with two or three people instead of 15 or 20, which makes a, a big, big difference yes. from many point of view. On deck, a lot of care and attention is taken to making sure it's kept clear. Ropes and hoists are hidden away. It's great for safety and keeps those lines looking smooth and sleek. This is possible because technology also gave, gave us the possibility okay, yeah. to hide maneuvers. It's a design uh, feature, but it's also a function because you hide maneuvers on a 24 meter boat. I mean, you hide ropes with tons of yeah. loads and be dangerous. So it's again, design, form, function, everything it's working together. together. Wally boats are built exclusively in Italy. Basically, we have the sea just outside the yard, yeah, so nice. it's very <laughs> easy to, to lift into the water, do then all the sea trials. The company was launched in 1994 by Luca Bassani. Production varies from year to year. It all depends on what projects they get commissioned. Some year we have uh, three up to four boats under construction. Uh, other years we only have one, but maybe it's a much bigger boat. Four builds may not sound many until you look at how much they're worth. The total value of these contracts might be around 50 million euros. Budgets are big, timescales are long. Let me say that an 80-foot sail yacht takes uh, 18 months to be built since the signature of the contract. Uh, a 100-footer uh, takes um, two years. And a 140, 150, let's say 40, 50 meter sail yacht takes up to three years to be built. With yachts, Sales are really what they're all about. One company specializing in sales is Sanders, based on the south coast of the UK. Well, a boat without sails, a boat is just drag. It sits in the water, it has, goes nowhere, it'll go back and forwards with the tide, so it needs to have some form of forward propulsion. The propulsion on a yacht comes from the sails. While Wally yachts do have an engine, it's actually the sails that provide most of the propulsion. At the back of the boat is the mainsail. This is the most important sail for catching the wind and driving the boat forwards. At the front is the jib. It helps with propulsion, but also provides stability and reduces turbulence. A third sail, which is sometimes deployed, is called the spinnaker. It can certainly help your speed, especially when racing. How sails work is very complex but essentially, they act like an aerofoil, just like an aircraft wing. Air traveling over the curved side travels faster than air on the inside. This creates an area of high pressure behind the sail and an area of low pressure, a vacuum, in front of the sail. And because it goes at a greater distance, it has to go faster to keep up with the wind on the inside. And that acceleration of wind creates a vacuum on the actual 
curved side of the sail, and the sail will then move into that vacuum. So with yachts, you actually are creating this different, different entrance speeds, and therefore the sail will lift into that vacuum and therefore go forwards. Because the sail pulls the boat into the area of low pressure, that's why the boat speeds forward. The further and faster you want to go, the bigger the sail area needs to be. The largest of the Wally yachts has a total sail area of 1,100 square meters. Now that's what you call a real big rig. But you can't buy a sail like this off the shelf. Sails for yachts like Wally are made here. Sanders Sails design and manufacture for all kinds of boats. Racing, classic and cruising. It's an intricate process that takes a lot of skill, a lot of time and a lot of space. The first step is to lay the groundwork. Preparation is key. To make a great sail, you've got to take the trouble to actually make sure you design the sail to suit that boat. Therefore, that means visiting the boat, measuring the boat, not relying on a sail plan, not relying on the, an old sail to copy. That is so critical. If you don't start with the right information, you're just wasting your money and wasting your time. So you have to measure the boat up, you know, take the right details, and then design the sail to fit that boat. The shape and how the sail will function in the wind is all worked out on a computer. Once we measure the boat up, we then incorporate those measurements into the computer, onto the design program, which then generates the sail in both a 2D mold and a 3D mold. Today, they're making a sail called a spinnaker. It's made of 36 individual panels. The computer works out how to cut them from a roll of fabric with minimum wastage. Different cloths have different cloth whips depending on the manufacturer. Um, so with this cloth which we're using, um, which is called Nylite 90, um, it, ten, it comes in one meter 50 wide, so I can then nest the panels to that width to maximize the amount I can fit on a table, minimizing wastage of the cloth, which, especially with the more exotic fabrics, is very important because you don't want to waste anything, you want to save money. This process of arranging panels with cool efficiency is called nesting. And that's all done now, and then I can switch over to the to laser cutter, nest it all in, get the, the cloth on the table and, and cut. The process of making a Wally boat can take years. And with four being made at any one time, they're often at different stages of construction. I'm here at the Forley shipyard where I've come to see two Wally boats which are nearly completed. This is where the boats start to take shape and where the luxury starts to show. I'm really excited. Hi. Here to show me around is production manager Lorenzo Mascarucci. So, Lorenzo, can you tell me what's happening here, what we have? On the shipyard, we have on this side 26 meter motor yachts, and on the other side, we have a sailing boat, 110 foot. We are nearly to complete the construction. Uh -huh. We have three months left uh, to delivery of the Wally yachts, uh, power boats, and four months on this side to deliver the, the sailing boats. It's a very exciting moment because we can uh, touch and feel uh, the hand of the boat. Uh, and uh, so this, this moment is really amazing. The boat I particularly want to see is one of Wally's sailing yachts. So, Lorenzo, what's this? This is a Wally 110 and this uh, amazing uh, sailing boat. We are almost on the last uh, phase of the construction. The paint job is uh, already done. It's a brilliant surface. As, as you can see, it's uh, like uh, a bowl. As like, is, a mirror. like a mirror. Like a mirror. No, it is. It's fantastic. So, Lorenzo, is this one of the more luxurious Wally boats that you make here? Yes, it is. It's an incredible boat. It's amazing. It's a full of technology design, and you can spend all your time with this boat to make a party. You can go to race because the performance has top performance. has an incredible uh, piece of art. Fantastic. So it's performance and leisure. Performance and, and leisure and for design. You. <laughs> How much would we be looking at for one of these? 
20 million euros. I'll take one. Come on. <laughs> of course I'll take one. In my dreams. Not all boats, of course, take quite as long as these to build. We visited another shipyard where they use more traditional methods. This is Spirit Yachts, based in the UK at the port of Ipswich. Many of the boat builds here are based on fiberglass combined with a wood epoxy resin construction. But the process is very similar to carbon fiber. Layers of the stuff are pulled over a wooden mold. They're coated with a resin mixed with a hardener. Rollers are used to make sure the resin fully saturates the fiberglass sheet and to get rid of any air pockets. The team has to work quickly before the resin begins to harden. Then it's onto the next layer until they reach the required thickness. Finally, it's wrapped in a giant plastic bag and any remaining air is sucked out. The new fiberglass and wood epoxy hull is then left under vacuum for a few hours to cure. Back in Italy, once the design and production schedule has been agreed, the boat build can begin. Stage one is to create an individual mold for the boat's hull. For this build, we're on Italy's west coast. Obviously, the hull is the fundamental part of the boat. It's the watertight membrane, or body, and gives it buoyancy. Building the hull of a Wally yacht takes several stages. So the first uh, phase we are doing here is the mold. The mold is critical. It gives the hull its shape. The most important point about a Wally hull is what it's made from. They use one of the most technologically advanced materials in the world, carbon fiber. And it's about nine times as expensive as the cost of fiberglass. It's one of the strongest and lightest materials ever invented and the key to constructing a Wally boat. They employ a leading carbon fiber expert to make sure they get it right. Effectively, it's carbon atoms which create a very stiff filament. Uh, this is encased by an epoxy resin which gives incredible stiffness and lightness they're of that of uh, one and a half times lighter than aluminium. Um, I think three and a half times lighter and stiffer than steel. From the, the 80s, it's changed yachting completely and, and I think these days it's used through, through most industries. Carbon fibre has revolutionised many modern processes. It's usually associated with the aerospace industry, with motor racing, Formula One, and medically with the construction of prosthetic limbs. It's composed of very thin strands of carbon bonded together, thinner even than human hair. Its great quality is, it's very light. Normally, carbon fibre is used in automotive, in aerospace, but here we are at Woolley, where we're building boats ranging from 30 to even 50 metres of size, variably between 300 and 700 square metres of hull, of which each layer of carbon fibre has to be applied by hand. The hull is known as a composite. That simply means it's built up from several layers of material to create one piece. Broadly speaking, the hull has three layers. First, a carbon fiber skin. Then, a layer of flame-resistant Nomex honeycomb. And finally, another layer of carbon fiber. This sandwich of carbon fiber and Nomex creates the composite. Once we have the mold, then we can start the lamination of the hull shell. The lamination of the hull shells means uh, starting from uh, the fabrics of the carbon fiber that is actually something like this, uh, 
textile material and we lay down all the layer into the, into the hull mold. There can be 10 or more layers depending from the engineering. This is painstaking work and takes months to complete. As each layer goes down, vacuum bags suck out the air to make sure the sheets of carbon fiber bond perfectly. Air is a bad conductor of heat, so if there's any still inside when the carbon fiber's heated, the bonding could fail. And a centimeter too thick will make all the difference. Before moving on to stage two, it's time to turn up the heat. We cook it into this big oven to, be, to make sure that the carbon become a solid piece of carbon that can make the boat safe. <laughs> this entire room is one giant oven. It will cook the hull's laminated carbon fiber layers into one incredibly strong skin but it's a nervous time for the team as they wait for the process to be completed. It's basically like uh, cooking a, a cake. So you start uh, with something soft and you get something solid. Part of the critical middle layer is Nomex. It looks a bit like honeycomb cardboard and is used because of its flame resistant qualities. So as soon as we finish the carbon fiber lamination, we start uh, to placing all the foam into the, into the hull. That is actually the activity we are doing now. This uh, material helps uh, to make uh, the, the, the hull shell uh, stiff and rigid enough. It's important the hull is super light. These boats are built for speed and style, but above all, they have to survive the sea. The boat must be strong to hit waves, uh, so that's why the next step is placing all this core material between the layer of carbon fiber. One more layer of carbon fiber and the shell of the hull is complete. We do the same also for the deck. We have to produce a mold and then to laminate the deck on the mold, post cure in the oven. At that point, we have, let's say, an empty shell, which is the hull, and we have the deck separated. Wally use ready-made carbon fiber strips that have been saturated with a temperature-sensitive resin. Before being baked into a permanent shape, they have to be stored at just the right temperature so the sheets can be molded whilst they're still flexible. Once we get the carbon fiber cloth, which is refrigerated, because the resin is in a state um, that needs to be cured, so uh, we get it out of the freezer and we lay this, these tablecloths or wallpaper over a mold. And once we cure this carbon over any form that we desire under, under heat, it remains to that shape for the rest of its life. The real value of carbon fiber is that it's so light. It completely changes the power and speed ratio of whatever is being built. So you could think about building a boat in wood, which historically every boat was made in wood. Uh, but ultimately, a carbon boat of the same size could be half, half its weight. So that is uh, in today's market where, where things are going. Carbon fiber is important for Wally Bates because basically it's the best material available today in the world. Before anything gets built, every single aspect of the design and engineering needs to be signed off. Nothing is left to chance. I'm in Monaco, where Wally Yachts have their HQ. This is the nerve center where they create the designs for their customized boats. It's here, back in the south of France, the Wally design team go over what their client requires. They're responsible for making sure every detail is correct before the build begins. 
They use 3D computer modeling to show them exactly what they're going to get. So, Tommaso, we're in the headquarters of Wally. This is the yes. HQ. This is the nerve center of design. Yes, it is. You're the head designer. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the design process? Well, uh, we started with a brief, and then from here, we try to visualize as better as possible with virtual images. This, for example, mm -hmm. is a 3D render. It's how we show to a client his dreams in reality. It's not real, obviously. <laughs> it's not built up. It's it not seen. <laughs> exactly. It looks real. It looks real. So, so you are able to show to the client from the very first sketches and, and initial ideas down to a perfect, a perfect render, basically, a perfect image of what they will be receiving. So they know exactly Absolutely. you have understood what they want. Absolutely. Before starting the construction of a 53 meter boat, we try to give him the most clear idea of every single detail of the of boat. He is building. The designers then hand the job on to the technical team. It's down to them to turn the designer's vision into reality. We make a full 3D model of all the components of the boat. That is, at the beginning, a general model, and then we go in the detail of each uh, very little part. As a, an example, we have the steering system that is designed in each screw, so we can see here the steering system. And uh, on the steering system, we have the rudder, the connection bar, and we design each screw and each parts of, of the system to be sure that there is no interference and that everything works in, in the proper manner. The design and technical plans are incredibly detailed. They form the basis for how the boat should be built. What we do is uh, um, to design, make 2D drawings that uh, are the drawings used to build the boat. And uh, uh, those drawings are very precise, uh, with uh, defining in each item with very uh, small tolerance, and the, the builder can build the boat in a very precise manner. But being a mechanical engineer is not without its challenges. The engineering of the Wally 110, the boat that we have in the yard at this moment, take around two years of six engineer to, to be completed. And obviously, we, uh, we started the production of the boat before we complete the full engineering. And we proceed in, uh, in parallel with the, with the construction to finish the engineering of the boat. As an engineer, the real challenge is to balance the cost, the quality, and the timing. It's not easy. The inside of a Wally boat gets just as much attention as the outside. They go to extraordinary lengths to get it right. I'm at Mondolfo on Italy's Adriatic coast, where the interiors for the Wally boats are made. They work from 3D designs that have been fully approved by the client, and they have a very clever way of ensuring that the interiors are light, yet strong, and of course, elegant. Hi. Welcome, Francesca, to Best Furniture. Thank you. Come on in. I'm meeting Wally interior specialist Tommaso Costa to find out how he goes about creating the interior of a yacht. Basically, when we start a new project, our focus and our targets is always the same is to have the lightest and then solid and high quality furniture. To, to achieve this aim, basically we have a couple of skills and, uh, and tools. I mean engineering and the use of the lightest material on the market. Just like the hull and deck, the interior of the yacht is made using composite materials. The outer layers are carbon fiber or plywood and the core is foam or again honeycomb Nomex. It's used not just for the interior walls, but the cupboards and shelves as well. Since we, we built a performance boat, we're looking at perform high performance material. I mean, if a boat is lighter, obviously it will be faster and will be also solid when you, you bang with, uh, on a wave or you are cruising. Everything is lighter, it's supposed to be also with much more performance. To build the interior, it has to go through several processes. The first stage 
is the cut. We used to, uh, a specific machine called the CNC machine, this is computer numeric control cut, and we need a special worker to put the panel inside the machine and start the, um, the program. The CNC machine takes the design and cuts the panel to exact specifications. To make sure they're getting it right, they assemble the whole interior of the boat, the walls, the fixtures, the fittings, everything, before it's installed inside the hull. So the client can see exactly how the inside of their boat will look before it's anywhere near the water. Since our clients has a very high standard, we used to discuss with them the first time when they come to see the, the furniture, if everything is correct, or even they have a new request and we have to, to, to reply. And obviously, our totally care about the customer is a part of the game, uh, to be uh, kind and give them what they, 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 they want. When it comes to dealing with customers, there's one golden rule. With our company, we make all possible things to make our client happy. And we said in Italian, il cliente ha sempre ragione. That means the client is always right. Once the customer is satisfied, the interior is carefully reassembled inside the hull. Back in the UK, at the Spirit Yacht Workshop, another boat is under construction. The bulkheads go in, adding to the strength and integrity of the vessel. Then it's fitted out. Even on water, we still want all our mod cons. Finally, a new yacht emerges. More and more people want to get out on the water. This boat will soon be ready to be launched. Boating and sailing is growing in popularity around the world. It's estimated that globally, thousands of people a year take up the sport. Some quick, skillful work by the lift operator, and this new boat gets its first taste of the water. Even though it has a small engine, it maneuvers well. It's just the mast that's missing. The process of installing it is called mast stepping. It's lowered into place by a crane into a hole in the center of the boat, which is called the mast step. It needs a little assistance with the aid of some lubricant and a helpful boot, but it doesn't take too long to get it into place. Now it's launched, it just needs some finishing touches. Back in Italy, and I'm getting the full tour of a Wally yacht that's almost complete. It costs a cool 20 million euros. We're deep down inside the hull, checking out the boat's electrical system. It might be hidden from view, but even here, it's still got to look right. And I want to show you our hidden quality in true of this switchboard. It's very important for us to pay, make attention of our, all our installation. If you open every single inspection, every single part of the boat, you can get this kind of perfection. So any part of the boat, even though it'll never be seen, yes. it's all this tidy, this perfect. This perfect. This even is an though... example for the electrical part, but system of the boat or other equipment is made like this. And that's the quality that Wally works with. This is the quality of Wally. Looks are everything. So when it comes to the anchor, they have a rather impressive solution. Normally, all the other systems or all the other boats have the anchor arms is, is on the bow. That is, is, is a visible chain. Our system is coming out from the bottom of the, of the hull and is completely hidden. And with this system, we change 
the, the point of view because what is what he wants uh, is to have a pretty clean. boat clean in all conditions. It's a simple idea, but, but it's very clever. Although it's a sailing yacht, it still needs an engine to get out of the harbour to the open sea. This is the engine of the new Wally 110. It's a six litre marine engine with a 350 horsepower. I thought with a sailing boat you'd sail the sails. <laughs> the sailing boat doesn't need a big engine. So this is 350 horsepower is enough just to go at uh, 11 knots at uh, cruising speed. When we're talking about big engine, as on our uh, Wally power, we're talking about 2,000 horsepower. So this is quite a difference. Quite a difference, yes. <laughs> the team crane the engine up from the factory floor and into the vessel. This is a critical uh, moment because we have a very uh, small uh, space between the hedge, so they have to we have to come down carefully just to don't touch it, to don't damage any equipment in the engine room. And just fit it in just perfect. Yes. It's an anxious moment, but soon the engine is secure. Great guys, bravi ragazzi. Yeah. Back in the UK, sanders are busy on a special project. Spinnaker sails are made of thin, delicate nylon. It's difficult to cut with scissors or a blade, which is why they use lasers. What we do with the laser first is it will draw all the panels on first with a biro. Um, which is, shows the line where you need to stick the panels to and also draw the numbers on so that every panel has its own unique number so we know which order we have to stick it in to replicate the cell from the design that we made. The laser is so accurate it can cut panels with just two millimetres between them. It will go 900 millimetres per second when it does the laser so it can go nice and fast and you wouldn't even know it's going. It's a very thin white light where it's just making contact with the, with the cloth. So underneath now, that's cut by. That's completely clear. And the vacuum just holds, the, holds it to the table completely still until it cuts every, all the other panels on the table. In just two minutes, the laser has cut seven panels with pinpoint accuracy. The panels are removed from the vacuum table and spooled ready for the next stage. So in this case, we allow a two millimetre gap between the panels. And as you can see here, there's zero movement that's still firmly in place. And that was held together by the suction of the table. And the laser moves over the top and cuts it for you. Next up, the panels are assembled, ready for sewing using double-sided adhesive tape. And this was quite important because Laurie wants to make sure he replicates the same tension on both panels when he makes the seam. And all Laurie's doing is he's just following the biro line that was drawn by the laser. It's essential for the seam to be perfect. If any part of it's wrong, the sail simply won't work. You can then check the tension to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then you can then go onto the next panel and do the same process again on the next one until we then complete a section, which can then be taken to the sewing machine and we can put the first row of stitching in to hold it in place. That's how a spinnaker is made, but when it comes to the mainsail and jib, it's a whole different story. For these sails, sail makers need tougher stuff than nylon. In the modern era, most are made from materials such as Dacron, a kind of polyester. There's lots of different types of Dacron, and therefore you have the cheap ones and the expensive ones. So we actually offer a range. Other materials have become available uh, that provide um, more durability or less stretch, which is probably the main criteria we're looking for. Stretch is the enemy of speed. It literally takes the wind out of your sails. Less stretch means more miles covered with less effort. Better for the boat, more enjoyable for the crew. And this is where carbon fibre comes back into the story. Not only is it used to make the hulls of super yachts, because it's so strong and light, 
it's perfect for the sails as well. So this is an example of some of the cloth we might use um, here, which is a carbon fiber cloth, which is laminated with yarns of carbon fiber going along there. Um, and then on here is just a polyester yarn, which is just used to help hold it in place. The carbon fiber is designed to give zero stretch and, or minimal stretch and a lot of strength in the sail. Carbon fiber is so strong, it doesn't need to be tightly woven. So with a woven fabric, it's just, you've got to have it completely woven tight so that no air can go through it. Whereas with this, you can then use a very light, weak mylar over the top and then strengthen it with the carbon yarns, which in this case are spaced out to give you maximum strength. So it's usually saving your, your weight that way, um, which means you can go for a lighter sail and be able to maximize the sail area to give you performance in the racing boat where sail area is very important. Whatever the material, making a panel sail takes a lot of space. In this huge stitching room, workers are using floor-mounted sewing machines to assemble a carbon sail. They stand in pits beneath the raised floor. The panels are stitched in Sander's signature colour. Two lines of tan stitching, and if it's needed, a line of white stitching. Next, the corners are patched. These are the areas under greatest strain. They're reinforced by building up extra layers of material on top of the sail. Finally, they finish the sails by adding rings, and if necessary, extra panels to the corners. At Sanders, they have an experienced team. But on some projects, it's not just that the sails must perform, they have to look good as well. Someone phoning up who might have a Wally, for instance, you know, uh, which is a, obviously a beautifully made Italian yacht, will want something far more exotic, very low stretch, and a lot more flash to look at because obviously the boat is very flash within itself. And that means an ultra high tech membrane sail, which, unlike many other types, is designed and made in one single piece. Rather than a panel sail, whereby we're buying a roll of cloth, cut it into patches and into pieces, and then stick it together again. With a membrane sail, we actually design the sail, design the yarn type, design the yarn content, and then have the sail laminated to our design. But for Peter Sanders, the pleasure of seeing his finely crafted sails being installed far outweighs the pain of creating them. Designing the sail here, cutting it here, manufacturing it here, finishing it here, and then you know, seeing it out of the boat, that, that's good, that's, that's, a, that's an ego trip. It's, 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 it's worthwhile. One of the most distinctive features of a Wally yacht is the mirror-like finish. Sometimes you think it's not actually there. Uh, this is about four months of work where there are many guys uh, which are sanding by hand with 20 coats of paint applied, each coat needing its own application and its own sanding procedure. Any excess filler is always removed. Every extra gram of weight could make a difference. We don't want to add too much filler to create weight. So we're sanding the fillers until we're touching the carbon fibre. We're always looking at where we're at. We're applying numerous fills of filler until we get the perfect form. That is smooth. It's like glass. Over the next few months, the Wally team here in Fort Lee will work day and night to complete this yacht. With the deck and interior being finished off and the mast and canting keel fitted, the team will move on to water checks before handing over the sails. The making of a modern boat is testament to the latest technology and materials using the best in design and style. I've gone back to the start where designs are dreamt up and watched plans being put to paper. I've followed the interior being built and witnessed carbon fibre lamination firsthand. Plus, I've seen what goes into fitting out a super yacht. But before my Mediterranean dream comes to an end, I head back to the south of France 
to join Luca Bassani on one of his prized yachts. Please, Francesca. Thank you. And this is the leaving of the boat. So the big feature of this saloon is the connection with the outside between the interiors and the exterior of the boat. In fact, with the terrace of the sea, uh -huh. so low, you have these big windows and you don't lose the view of the sea. It goes straight. Exactly. You're just there. Outside. Exactly. You're connected totally to the sea still. Exactly. This is the aim, not to lose the exterior when you come inside. And I love, I love these windows. So you're, you're not coming into a cave. You're, <laughs> yeah. You have, have the, the light, feeling, you have the yes, sea. to remain outside. The, the way, the, the level that they're at, you just, as you come in, you immediately see the sea straight away. Yeah, in fact, you still keep 270 degrees of view of the sea. So beyond this beautiful living, we have four cabins for eight guests. We have a big galley and we have three cabins for the crew because this boat is able to go around the world. So you need to, to be able to stay on board for weeks or for months. Uh, so you need uh, everything. It's like, a, let's say, a floating house, uh, but still has to remain a boat. Yes. You don't have to forget that you are on a boat, that you are sailing, uh, that you are leaving the sea. So because with all the electronics, you can have fewer crew, so that means there's a lot more living space for everybody who's here. Exactly, exactly. So all the electronics that make the running of the boat also make the living part more comfortable. Absolutely, yes. And uh, this is usually, or it was usually a problem yeah. on this kind of boats because getting the boat bigger, you uh, you needed more and more crews. Catch and at the end, yeah. the boat was, was getting bigger <laughs> only for the crew, yeah. <laughs> not for the owner and the guests. I'm finally out at sea on a Wally yacht. This is certainly a life I could get used to. We probably all dream of life on a luxury boat when all you can hear is the sound of the sea and wind in the sails. To buy a Wally, you will need very deep pockets. Acquiring a spirit yacht would cause less damage to your wallet. Both prove we still have a great love affair with life on the open seas.